Thank you. Well, thank you guys. We've talked a lot these past days. Um, so, well, I'm here because of a fun turn of events. Last year, our management came very uh, excited of things that happened in the ApacheCon. And Javier promised that whomever got a talk accepted here would get the trip paid. So I submitted a, a proposal hoping I could encourage our team to participate. And I'm here now because mine was accepted. So uh, something that uh, initially was um, a motivational action for the rest of the team uh, it brought me here. So uh, it also forced me to think what I can talk about. You know, you have all a lot of technical expertise and background and knowledge, and I do not have any of that. I just tried to get our teams to work and that we can achieve things together. So uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Argentina. I've been with Feeder for the past four years, coming from um, 10 years in working in IT, but not precisely on software because I was coming from the infrastructure world and a year and a half getting my second born. So I had to start all over. Uh, it was quite a challenge getting into fintech, into um, software. And with the other two around, uh, it became uh, quite a journey. Um, so some of the things that I want to go through is pretty uh, simple, straightforward. Um, our perception, you know, and Finerac, we all know what we are doing uh, with Finerac, so no need explanation. I want to talk a bit um, about the, uh, the flexibility on it that has allowed us to achieve a lot. Uh, how, what we have implemented uh, across the different countries th that we support, challenges, um, some cases that for some reason I consider relevant, and um, some lessons learned and takeaways that we can take from what we do daily. That is the only thing we do that is implementing Finerac. So I don't have to explain to any of you what Finerac is, so I'll skip the two the two first sentences, and usually I give the demos, especially to the Spanish pro prospects, because we have a team that does the English, but when it comes to Spanish, uh, I'm usually the one that takes it, and um, I talk with leads and potential clients of all sorts, um, but the question that usually comes to their mind, and thank you, Diana, for bringing the, this term back to me, is flexibility, right? We always uh, try to um, convey that this is a tool that will allow them to grow exponentially as much as their business needs uh, and the budget, right? <laughs> so uh, we know all the features, everything that happens uh, during uh, the, any of the products that a customer decides to implement. So we have either an end user, a web, or an app that will connect in order to submit, to do an application, uh, to get accounts open, loan applications, deposits, all the features. I thought this was done because I thought there would be a wider audience uh, that may not know a lot about Finerac, but we know what they do, right? So um, uh, we know that we manage accounts, loan applications, deposits, transfers, KYC, all that we have across our clients because none of them have all. Uh, no, well, some have all, some have some, but, you know, it depends on, on that. So uh, the project life, life, cycle, life cycle that we follow for any client of any size or, or any sort is gathering the requirements and see how much we have to develop from the base instance. Uh, we design and plan the implementation, how long it will take. We have uh, a lot of discussions around how to achieve certain requests. Um, we send it to development, QA, and then it goes to deployment and go live. 
And this is a, um, a, 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 a circle that happens over and over during uh, the life of a client that is under implementation and some of them that are already live and for some reason they have a new requirement that we have to add, then the cycle starts again. So we have done many customization, uh, customizations across the clients that we have around the globe. Some of them even were done before I joined Feeder. Um, this having to be here forced me to go back and see, and it was like nice looking back um, to all of the things that uh, we have done. And to me, um, nothing is impossible to be done uh, using this tool when we move forward and certain challenges come up. Um, it's not a bit of roses, but eventually we get there. Um, so um, on the LATAM region, um, mainly um, we have products that behave more complex. You know, we are uh, very, um, we have very complex uh, loan management way of functioning, the advanced payments and uh, charges and fees. You know, there are some sometimes assassins <laughs> on how things work. And in the um, Africa um, region where we have most of our clients, what I see is that mainly is products that operate maybe in an apparent simpler way, but they are granted to a larger number of people, right? So what we have to work is on how we manage all those transactions that keep on having. So that gives us um, a lot to be entertained with because <laughs> issues are uh, and, and requests are of all sorts. So um, we have done revolving credit, uh, reconciliation, um, improvement of the jobs to simulate a bank closure, that type that Finerac does not have with the jobs that run by, by default. Uh, improvements to the cashier module that work separately, uh, usually, and, and in, in fact, they're being used as part of an integration with a cashier, it's a digital bank that wants to um, for their customers not to go to the physical office. So, this has been integrated is a touch and uh, touch screen type of work for the cashier to be able to process not having ever a queue um, waiting outside we have done uh, exchange module matrix to define uh, what a certain interest or charge uh, in a percentage will apply based on certain criteria for a client but on cal cal calculations eva that is Mexico specific and Colombia. And also um, a lot of what we get that seems simple but takes its time is being able to translate the terms for each client that speaks Spanish. In Latin America, we say things differently. So just to customize it to the level that we have English Mexico, we have the English Guatemala, eh, sorry, the Spanish Mexico, Spanish Guatemala. So all that, so we can even make it more customized to each region. The ones in the middle are some that are um, related to integrations um, uh, and reporting. Um, or do integrations is also that we manage across uh, many of our clients. And um, in the Africa region, we have um, uh, a lot of regulatory reporting that we are uh, managing as, as the most relevant in the general implementations, uh, bureaus, risk manage management, and decision engines, okay? Um, now, the challenge that we usually face are regulatory variations from country to country. Um, so we need to factor that in whenever we want to approach any project in order to make sure that we uh, are compliant. Usually that's something that we need to get from our clients because um, it's not something that we are expert. We're not, not financial experts, but uh, Finerac, so we have to do some digging with that. The cultural differences, uh, we could say that there are no two similar clients, but there are, there are differences uh, when we 
uh, approach them in different countries, customizations that are localized precisely to get aligned with financial products and services reporting that are specific to each country. Uh, scalability, as I was saying before, mainly in those clients that manage um, a big number of transactions or clients, we need to be able to foresee what's the growth that the client will have in order to be able to support it from the infrastructure. And data security, that is another challenge because it varies from country to country and that's something that comes at the end of every project is a fixed um, thing that we have to address usually towards the end of it. So um, thinking about flexibility, I'm not going to talk much on open source, um, but I know this, what the, the open source and Finetag was uh, conceived for that was being able to um, give the opportunity to uh, uh, for financial inclusion to everyone is that I chose these three cases. Um, we may have bigger or more challenging projects um, that we have done, but this uh, were some examples I chose uh, in order to, sh to just share with you how we can do both, right? Customize and um, give a solution to certain clients that also have an impact on their communities. So uh, right now we are working with a nonprofit social enterprise that is uh, their headquarters are in the USA, but they are actively working in Guatemala. They are uh, managing a, um, an, well, an, an, an NGO, let's say, that allows women uh, that have small, um, small businesses to be able to grow. This is a very big, um, uh, it's, it's a very common way of on behaving um, in, in some areas of Guatemala. So this project was especially interesting because we are digitalizing um, all their operation. Right now they have a, a, a um, how do they call it, a field officer that goes and takes by paper uh, and with an envelope, uh, literally the money from the women that are part of that group and goes and takes it to a secretary that takes note. So um, when we showed them that that was possible with basic developments uh, or customizations and even not, not making any changes to the base uh, they were amazed, right, on what can be reached. I hope they all get to keep their jobs at the end because this is going to change their lives and the speed in which they can process all their requirements. So for them, um, they, we, are, um, we built a specific uh, loan management behavior for communal, uh, communal lending. Um, they had to be, they were going to... Uh, 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 a system to check which were blacklisted and for many factors that they considered, they would define if that client was in the blacklist or not. Well, now that happens based on a matrix um, that was built on top of Fineract, all the workflow approval process that could not be achieved just with a maker checker and roles um, uh, has been um, uh, included in the way they operate. And also, the, um, they use a lot of checks instead of cash and accounts. They don't use transfer because of these communities that live in places that may, they may not even have access to the internet. So checks was a big module. Then the next case is a bank in Nigeria. Uh, not only they, are, they have become a big bank and they have a, over 190,000 cli clients since they went live late in 2019. But this bank, the, the, the bank's purpose is also to try to train and help Nigerians, Nigerians to make better decisions and educate them on financial um, 
behaviors, right? And the last one is, well, this is a digital bank running fully on Finarag. They have account savings. They are able to analyze their expenses, um, integration with debit cards, send and request money um, over digital means, um, and has grown uh, a lot since that moment. Is also oriented to young people that are starting, they are getting their first steps in the in in banking and financial decisioning. And the last one is a fintech located in Colombia, started very small and the beginnings of 2020, they already have more than 700,000 clients and they want to offer financial products 100% digitally uh, in an easy way to get um, loans for any kind of progression. Um, so we had to deliver for them the loan management system based on Colombia's regulation, taxes. Colombia has the same as in Mexico with a specific um, taxes and charges, massive interest and charges waivers. Today we know that just that that's done uh, record by record when you want to apply a wave. Um, also partial by amounts and also integration with invoicing um, with uh, consuming the information from Fineract, okay? So from the key takeaways and the lessons we learn on a day-to-day -day basis. So the, the great thing about this is the wide ad adoption of it. Um, as time passes by, um, I realize that there's nothing that, as I said before, cannot be done. The potential of it is unlimited. Um, also room for improvement, right? Sometimes when we face uh, certain implementations, there are moments in which I know that I have, I start fearing a bit when we have to think better solutions for data migration, integrations, and mainly the use of AI um, to become more effective and accurate, and also improving the quality of the, the code that is um, delivered. Um, also, as I said before, getting local insights is key before starting any project, because there are, all countries have their own um, specifics. And also to think with um, uh, a community-oriented development that um, is able to focus on the quality and reliability of the code that is given to foster the acceleration of the development and contribute uh, to the adoption of this um, globally, okay? So, oh, it was quick. I don't know if I breath during all this time. So, any questions? You cannot ask me questions because you know them all. Well, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Ah, sorry. Ah, oh, no. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, um, penetration testing and its results, right? It starts, um, it, it, sometimes it, it throws results that there are some that a client can live for, but also because of some regulations, there are certain items that they could not live with, right? So when we are getting um, towards the end of the projects, that when the heavy work starts in trying to get those remediated, um, not only because it's how the code should be delivered, but there are specifics that they have regulations that force them to have certain um, audits passed in order to um, to to be able to be approved. Yes. So, um, the penetration testing, so your clients, yes. They usually hire third-party vendors to run them. In some cases, we run them to the ones that we have in support proactively. Um, but usually that's something that is handled by the client, but it's code work, so we have to address um, as, as we do. But um, there's proactive also uh, security, you know, pen tests in order to make sure that everything's
in a good shape. Yes. Yes. Yes, they submit a report that we review as part of a requirement, usually. Yes. Yes, in fact, we have worked, it was this couple of months, um, there was a very interesting audit from one of our clients in Nigeria that um, we uh, put a l our efforts in getting them fixed. Uh, that's an initiative you can talk to Robert after because he led it. In order to be able to resolve this that we see as a common issue that can be co contributed back as uh, as part of improving the, the quality of uh, the code that we all use, right? So yes, we had a nice list that we addressed that has PRs to be. Why are they looking at Robert? <laughs> no, 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 they ha we have them on our side. No, you're the only Robert. But yes, that's coming, that just happened uh, the beginning of September, we are working on um, getting those um, uh, ready from our side to be, but it, but it was something that had to do with password, uh, nice improvements that will uh, really contribute to the overall uh, project. You will get those PRs soon, James. Uh, there are some that have a custom, some that even do not use the front end, they just connect with apps. It depends on each, uh, in each implementation, how the, uh, they approach um, and how they decide to, to go with, right? All those digital banks, they all access through, um, through an app, users, customers, and it's only maybe their own team's internal uh, loan officers that are uh, working through the UI. Depending on each client has a different way of accessing to it. We usually um, give our suggestions and but then they have strong usually technical teams that decide the, the way to go. Another one? Ah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We have an initial scope that usually is, depending on, on certain variables, has more depth or, or less. Sometimes we have high level definition. Um, the work that our team does is once we have a certain scope, we 
work with the, our counterparts and the client, and we start um, sprint by sprint uh, grooming, get, getting requirements and delivering, right? So we do by chunks, but as long as things are being uh, developed, uh, the BAs usually are the ones taking new requirements for the next one we try. That is um, a process that does not stop, that we don't find uh, gaps of not developing in the middle of the process, right? We try to always have a good backlog um, of requirements to be taken and we allocate resources based on until when we have to deliver, um, if we have room for someone that is able to take, we put extra um extra resources there to work on it. But yeah, we, we bring them really to the detail. Um, and in that we based our estimations and um, it's a, we, we tried from beginning to end not to have gaps in the middle that, you know, we don't know. Sometimes, sometimes we have to even push our clients to make definitions, right? Because we get to the, those points that sometimes we move faster than they do uh, in trying to get requirements. So we try to um, get uh, permanent feedback um, so as to be able to be one step ahead um, and, and trying to always have something to work on as, as we do the demo and deliver.